now offer to those people because they are a large amount of people. You can't do that outside your policy environment. And your policy environment, the first thing you look at, what is the budget? The government is still an enabler. Where do they spend their money? 2016 estimate, only 15% went on capital expenditure, and that is what we stimulate, that's what we reduce the cost of doing business. The 2017 budget estimate is for 30%. But more especially, government is also a very large borrower now, and is borrowing significantly from the domestic market, and it has an impact. When government is a large borrower in the domestic market, it crowds out what? The private sector. So if you're asking yourself, if government is a large borrower, where will the private sector? How will it get access to loans? And what it also does, so that people can continue financing government, it has kept interest rates what? A bit what? Higher than we would have expected. So you are operating in, a, in an environment where government itself is a major player and its activities has an impact on your ability to, to what, compete. But we have no problem with borrowing by government if it is going towards what? Capital expenditure. So that overall, the cost of doing business does come down. We have a Nigerian Economic Recovery Growth Plan. Good plan. I've been around for some time. There's no government that has come up with plans that we've not said they are good. Our biggest challenge has always been about what? Implementation. Implementation. Sometimes I wish oil will stay below $30, even come to $5. Because what I find very interesting is under the era of low oil prices, things seem to be happening. And I made that point about your particular roadmap. How do you assess whether things are working? I think the introduction I said I'm chairman of a school. Uh, my school is about 240 kilometers uh, north of Lagos in Oshun State. So therefore, I have to travel there quite uh, often. I'm also from there, so I have to go home quite often. What is my samples? I ask myself, how long does it take me to get from Lagos to my place? Historically, it was a three-hour drive, 240 kilometers. So if you're averaging 80 to 100 kilometers per hour, it should be what? About three hours, I should be there. Up till last year. It became an average minimum of about four hours to any other thing because we all spent the night on Lagos about the expressway. Now, how do you operate in an environment where you cannot move around? How do you operate in an environment, even if I set up a factory, I cannot get to see my factory. I cannot get there. So what are my samples? How long is it taking me to undertake this journey? All of a sudden, when people are telling me Nigeria was in recession, and things are not happening last year, my average time started doing what? Started what? Coming down. Is it that the recession removed travelers from the road? It is possible. But all of a sudden, I saw the road being fixed. Lagos, Ibadan Expressway being fixed. Quietly. When I first told people, ah, all of a sudden, you can get to Ibadan and hours. People still have goose pimples about the fact that, no, going to Ibadan is about a four or five hour journey. But as average done, what? It has average what? Come down. What are the samples on the road apart from that? The madness of what? Of Nigerians and their driving habits. You ask yourself, it's as if the bigger your car is, the more you have the right of way, irrespective of what the laws are like. <laughs> so moving on the road in Nigeria also gives an, an idea of our legal environment, our attitude. It's also on that road that you also see the average Nigerian and the big man. While everybody is screened up, the first person to break the law and to jump on the other side will always be a government official, a big man with his siren and his escort, and rapidly followed by the transport cars, by the transporters. <laughs> so, when I see... So, when I see a Nigerian Economic Recovery Growth Plan, I try and go on the road again, and I'll say, these people saying these things, have they what changed? Because they've given us so many samples for us to see whether they are on the way. But in theory, it's fantastic. It's restoring growth. It's to build a competitive economy. Therefore, we must have diversification. We must invest in our people. Therefore, it's about education. We must have cheap food security. We can't be importing food at all times. We must invest in infra infrastructure. We must have an industrialization policy. The question is, are we going to stay consistent with this? What if oil goes to $100 per barrel? What if it goes to $150 per barrel? Can we stay with this plan? And that is why all of you must have your what? Your plan. All of you must have your samples so you can start shouting. Even if you are personally doing well, you should be asking, look, from these samples that I'm seeing, are things actually making progress? Like I said, I'm looking forward to when I make this journey about two and a half hours because that is what it really 
uh, should be. And when it gets there, I'll tell people you're on the way. The other samples I tell people is when I land at uh, the airport in Lagos, I'm still at a loss as to why it's only in Nigeria that I land and you get to the first desk. One person looks at your passport, gives it back to you, and you give it to another person who looks at the same passport. And you are there just asking yourself, what is going on? I'm still asking myself that you go to Ghana, there's an, uh, an hour's flight from here, and there's simple word, biometric. Somebody looks at your passport, and that same person waves you through. In some other environments you go there, it is the airline checking desk that actually checks your passport, makes sure you are free to travel, and you go straight through. But we still have some of these institutional, what I call roadblocks, that just makes us not think outside the box. But we are so used to it as Nigerians that we believe it is what? It is what? Normal. So again, that's another sample. Where will that airport be cleaned up? Where going through it is not really something you have to pray about. And where the people, irrespective of what we say, I still can't believe that this Orisa mentality is still with us. In spite of all the noises we make about corruption, people say openly, openly, without any regard, say, ask you anything for us today is Friday. And you're wondering, <laughs> and you're there in an airport, what if I was a visitor in which I can shrug that kind of statement that I have nothing for you? For a first time visitor to Nigeria, and somebody's asking him anything for you today is Friday, and the guy's an official, it's in a uniform, he's holding your luggage, and he's really holding on to it, and he's asking until you insist. You see, those are some of the road signs. So, the jury is still out. We'll have further comments on that. So, where are the opportunities? Where are the opportunities for me to run through? Certainly, there are growth areas. The biggest one will always be your construction. You must always look at agri, your arts and entertainment, technical services, and naturally, you must look at uh, real uh, estate. On the construction side, clearly, we hear about the contracts. But the key thing I, tell, I, I watch out for is to ask myself, are we sure Nigerians will take advantage of some of these opportunities in which government spending is making an impact? Some of the contracts that we are awarding, some of the, most of them appear to be what? Foreign entities. I sincerely hope, I'm not part and parcel of it, somebody's embedding in there. Are you sure Nigerian jobs are being created? Are we sure there's te uh, there is technology transfer? Are we ensuring that as you give somebody uh, a contract, it's not importing manpower from other uh, climates? Are we sure we are watching out for those kind of things? Well, that is what is particularly key uh, in that. Then there must be linkages to the wider uh, uh, economy. On the agricultural side, you ask yourself, if agri is to be transformed, how do we ensure that the farmers have access to the title of their land? If you have no title, you cannot get on that ladder of empowerment. The opportunities are there, there's food shortage, high food bills. Again, you must ask yourself, what do you do about registration of title? Every state sees the need that they have to bill you for your title as a means of making money. So the question you ask yourself is, can you occur to you that why don't you make almost title, almost free of charge to the farmer? Because what happens is that if a guy comes for title and he has title, guess what you have? You have statistics. You have the name, you have the owner, and all of a sudden, if he has title, and to that title also conditions how much he must pay every year's rent, you can do what? Taxation also turns up. The way I see it, when I look at uh, farmland and access, nobody is disputing with the farmer ownership of the land. Nobody is disputing with him. So to him, he's been farming the land. And since nobody is disputing ownership with him, he cannot understand why he has to go to state capital to go and pay a large sum of money for somebody to tell him what he knows. But we know that without that title, he cannot have access to the financial uh, sector. Art and entertainment is growing. It's one sector I tell people that, please, let them don't go and ask government. Because it was a sector that grew on the back of government non-interference. And I hope that industry does not get the Nigerian attitude that anything you now want to start running to Abuja. Abuja has left you alone. You've grown. You're the second largest employer in the land. Please, don't go back to Abuja and be asking them for what? For something. It is very key. What you should be asking for is how do we ensure, do you get, do you get it, that your talent issue of uh, patent laws are in place, issue of copyright laws are in place. That's what you should be fighting for. That intellectual uh, uh, property is respected. How do you how should make sure that in that industry, people adhere to contracts? What are, when, sometimes you peep and you ask people what is going on there. It just, people just do what they like. It's like Wild Wild West. But I believe that structures are coming into place. 
The other issue will always be the support services. We always think the accountants. They